Thanks for tuning in for to another video that we're doing here at AirTech. Uh, been getting a lot of calls over the last year and a half, two years since I've owned AirTech, and people talking about when we go to trade shows, the weight of the product and different things. And I kind of want to do this video just to touch base to people on different weights of things. I used to be in the same area of thinking, well, this one weighs more than that one and different things. And I started probably two years ago, three years ago, really just trying to see what everything weighs. Every time something would come through our uh, restoration shop that we'd be recovering, I'd go exactly measure, I, to be fair, I'd cut exactly square foot and right down on the back of them and, and put the weights of different processes. And I don't know, I'm gonna probably stir up a bunch of stuff on the web, but it, you know, it, it really all gets down to physics. Uh, there, you know, I've, I've talked to people on the phone and, you know, they'll say, well, why do you think air takes better? Or why do you think? I said, they're, they're all good processes. And, and if they're put on right, you know, they all are very similar in the way they're put on and the way they weigh. And I just want to do a few demonstrations just to show you the, the physics part. And I always do this little disclaimer. This is nothing supposed to be professional about these videos or anything. And I've actually got a little cheat sheet just so I don't have to cut and he has to re-edit something or anything, just had some thoughts wrote down. But it is true that weight is an enemy. I mean, cause if it's an extra weight on an airplane that you don't need, that's just extra power and extra performance that you're robbing off of it. Especially for the stove guys. I do a lot of super cubs for people. And, and you know, I, I think that some people are just getting a little bit overboard with the weight and don't get me wrong. I mean, if you're gonna be the guy that's doing the championship stole stuff, every ounce counts. With that being said, that's really not true. It's every gram equals an ounce, an ounce equals a pound. I mean, you have to you have to go all the way from the beginning. I always tell the joke to people, if you want to build a lightweight super cub, when you go buy the project or the kit, you have to use the little checkbook, not the long one, because the long one's way more. I mean, you have to almost take that mentality from the very beginning. You don't wait to the very end and decide to go away in different people's seat cushions and see which one's weighs light. It's too late then to take weight off. Uh, I learned that the hard way. I built a bear hawk and, you know, I put every bell and whistle I could think of. Thankfully, I put a 300 horse bear at Lycoming on it, but that thing got out of hand real quick and it was just pound at a time. And these guys get really into the, all the weights of everything and you know, you, you have to you have to look at it from the standpoint of what is needed on the plane and what's not needed on the plane. What are you going to do with the plane? So I'm just going to look at it from the covering standpoint. Uh, the to start out with, uh, when people talk about grams, you know, I think they get them misconstrued. They talk about grams or ounces or about the same. And you know, it's it's 28. It takes 28.35 grams to make an ounce. And I used to, when I'd build engines and stuff, and you'd have these guys that'd roll off their tongue, they'd be talking about thousands and doing something within two thousandths. And they really never had a, a real idea of what a thousandths in. When you start looking at one of these sheets of paper that starts comparing a thousandths to a diameter of a hair or a diameter of a paper clip, I mean, it's, uh, I'm gonna stop the video and go over to the paint lab and just demonstrate something for you. You guys, it, it just lets you know on what a tenth of a gram actually is. Because I use our paint scales and stuff to do a lot of this weights on this. So we'll go over to the paint lab and I'll show you one of the demonstration. All right, we moved over here to the paint lab. And this is one station where we do some of the mixing. I'm going to do a whole different video someday on colors and, and explaining colors. But, you know, a lot of times people think that, well, I ordered a gallon of Cub yellow, you went to the shelf and picked it up. No, we, we make the paint as far as the pigments like you would in an automotive paint shop or, or wherever. And, you know, I mean, it's down to just a drop or two, a tenth of a gram. And you notice these are just laid out in grams. And, you know, it's, you, you know, you think, well, that's, that's real sensitive. You know, that's 300 grams right there. But I mean, I want people to understand what a tenth of a gram is. I'm just going to fan, I'm just fanning it. And you can see what it's doing there. We're, we're talking such minute weights. You know, when I say a square foot of something weighed 20 something grams, when you start calculating all these huge numbers, but when you start bringing them back down to ounces and pounds, there's just not as much weight as you think. 
I just want to do that demonstration for someone that's not the normal guy that doesn't deal with stuff as far as what an actual gram is. A lot of times when I'm putting pain in and I'm down to within a tenth of a gram, it'd be like one drop maybe, maybe a drop and a half, and then that's going to put it, put it at this point. I just want to demonstrate that. We'll go back over to the other part now. All right, we're back over. And what I got to noticing, I would go through and, and cut different things out. Uh, I, I'm not going to really get into whose is what here, but it doesn't really matter uh, because, you know, I do notice some of these that's 10 or 15 years old that you start to be in the paint, you know, and that's that's not an air tech deal there. I mean, but when it's on the airplane, if it had never had a rock hit or something, it, it might go for years. But like this particular sample come in at 29.6 grams, which is, is not bad. Uh, you know, here's a stitch that, that I had, some of these ones that I actually did because Brian would be next door painting something and we always have test racks of fabric and our primer on. And I'd have a test rack of just straight sinking that. So while he's priming something, instead of me going and mixing something, I just take it over there and set it in the corner of the paint booth, say, while you do that, put me X number of coats on this. Well, this one come up to 45.4 grams. And, and that's with an extra coat of erythane. This was the erythane process. So naturally you think, well, I'm not gonna buy nothing with erythane because that's heavy. Well, I kept, kept messing with it. And I had some that, you know, here's, you know, your regular 102 fabric comes in at 8.8 .8 grams per square foot. Uh, here is a, you're going to have you guys say, well, I'm the old school poly spray. Well, poly spray, polytone on, when poly spray, 12 by 12 is 38.5 grams. But see, what I did was I put enough poly spray on to make it look like, I, you know, I can see the weave in it, but that's, that's the way poly spray is supposed to, that's the way polytone is supposed to work. And the more I did, I kind of got to thinking about it and come to find out that by me going next door and cutting something off of an airplane uh, wasn't a really fair comparison on products because I have no clue what that mechanic did. He may have screwed up and had a run and has two extra coats or this or that. Um, here's one, I don't even know what it, I just know it was off of a late, late model Super Viking and it come out 45.6. Biggest thing I noticed was it pops like a potato chip, but whatever they put on that airplane was shiny, but 45.6 grams. And here's an older plane that I think was what they called the old Razorback process. And I do know that a gentleman had put one paint job on top of this with AirTech probably 20 years ago. See, that thing come out 76.5. And, you know, I, I, I don't knock any company, but I do have kind of a issue, you know, the Ortex guy, he'll go around, he's got this piece that he always does at the at the seminars, and it's probably a piece like this, and I just don't like it when he's, this is representing all of the other companies, and it's not. I mean, Razorback was a tough old bird in its day, but, you know, 76 grams, that's, that's kind of out of hand. And I kept doing things, and it just happened one day that my cousin was doing a wing for a guy, and he was had his star boss on it, which is a stitch type or a, a consolidated product. And I already had their primer on it, and I wasn't really thinking, so I went next door and I said, "Don't clean that gun up." He was priming. I said, "Don't clean that gun up. I'm just going to rinse it. Cause I don't care what color it looks like." I said, "I'm going, I'm just going to rinse it and put some, uh, mix up a little bit of, I think a uh, air ran thing." is what goes on top of, of uh, Star Boss. And I said, I'm gonna cut, shoot just two coats on that to wait. Well, I did it and I went to, any, and they, well, actually it's four coats. It said four coats of paint. So I was kind of, kind of seeing what they're heavy were. 112 grams. And I said, well, this ain't, this something's not right. And then it hit me. Brian had our primer gun with a 2.4 nozzle. I mean, he was rocking and rolling. He was doing big sets of wings and he was moving. I wasn't thinking, I had something laying there flat and I was, I was laying it out there until it flowed and did crossway. And I said, well, I'll just go ahead and do the full thing and I'm gonna walk away. So with that said, it's basically physics. How many coats are you gonna put on stuff? And when you look at a lot of, a lot of the numbers here uh, and you compare them, I've always been told that a J3 has around 750 square feet. 
Now, I think they may have been counting the interior. I walked next door to a PA-12, no, PA-18 right now, and I, and I measured the wing cord, five point something feet, and I just kind of kept a count of it and did just a rough guesstimate and actually kind of went over the round tips. I didn't come up with like 600 square feet, 650 square feet roughly is what I could come up with. So when you start to equate it back down, uh, it's like here's one sample, and this will be the worst case scenario of air tech. I mean, this is six coats of primer, or cross coats, you know, and there was probably one on here sanded in between, and four coats of paint come out to 39.8 grams. When you divide all that down by that square foot and equate it down, that's 57 pounds. Total paint, fabric, and everything is what's on the cut. Uh, our newest paint we're working with, and it don't mean that it's the new paint, this is just one of the new things that I was working with, and I pretty well went minimal on this as far as I put enough of our UV barrier 1030 primer. I think I probably put about three good coats on here. And this paint covers real well, so that I put, I think, two good color coats on it. And it came out to 27.6 grams. Well, that ended up being about 39 and a half pounds total weight on the airplane. And here's a paint on Ortex. You know, Ortex, you know, the way they advertise theirs, you're looking at uh, you're looking at about 15 or 16 grams, 15 grams per square foot when you do that equation. So you're at about 20, 22, 23 pounds total on the airplane. Uh, I that's I've I've never used I've did a lot of tests here with L4 Tex because I mean all my stuff has to be PMA, you know it's PMA and I have to test it. Uh, Ortex has its its place. I've just not had anybody in our shop you know come to our shop and say I want my plane done in Ortex yet. I mean, when they do, I'll, I'll do whatever they want to next door. Uh, there's a few pluses and minuses. Uh, I can tear this where I can't tear sinking that, but then again, I'm not going to have someone, I'm not going to have someone get in that position on my airplane with Ortex on it, so I ain't saying it's going to tear off the airplane. Uh, I've tested their glue compared to mine, and the first time I tested it, I said, this stuff ain't going to pass, but it did. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, it's just all goes back to what what you want on your airplane. Um, last year at Oshkosh, I noticed one of the Ortex planes looked very shiny. Then I heard word that they were recommending, well, put a coat of AirTech or Superflight paint on it. That goes back to that physics. So if you're going to do that, now you're doing the same thing that I was doing on these. So what's your advantage? You're fixing away as much or more when you start trying to put paint on that. So the only thing is, is you can put AirTech on, Superfly, any of these other. You can put, them on, put it on at a minimal amount, trying to get that weight down. And you're looking at going from 57, let's just round that to a 60 pound being a fat cub. And uh, 39, let's just say 40 pounds. You're, you're looking at 20 pounds difference in your airplane looking like something that come out of Cub Crafters or c and Aviation or somewhere over there that just looks like it's that deep and beautiful or it still looks shiny. That is the advantage of a lot of these urethane paints that they can go on at the minimal rate and they're still very shiny. And some of the advantages to the shiny is clean up, uh, stuff don't get in the pores, you know, as, as much as if it was something that had the weave that really showed. So there is some advantages, not only just being nice looking, but you know, to be the shiny part of it. Um, you know, I mentioned that Chisholm 3, that's what we're calling our new paint. It's, there's nothing wrong with our regular paint and we're gonna probably continue to sell it for years. Uh, the place that makes my pigments, you know, when you make the AirTech paint, you got pigments and then you have the magic or the binder that's, that's kind of your, your part of your paint that makes it flexible. Uh, we don't have the flex agents that are added in. It's in our binder. It's the way it cures and, and stops at a point. Uh, the company, when I bought AirTech probably a year ago, approached me and said, well, we're, we're still good with making the stuff to your specs, but we have something new that you probably haven't thought about. Well, I've been researching it and all the testing looks about the same. Uh, it's supposed to have maybe a little bit better hold on pigment. 
we've got probably three uh, Cub Crafter uh, carbon cubs out there now with it on it. They look beautiful, everything's set. I think we're doing uh, Waco next door in it. And it, it's, I'm gonna say I'm gonna eventually ease into it and do a changeover over the next year or two. So whenever I mentioned the Chisholm 3, that was just a, a it's a ATCHSM, that's air tech color, high solids material. That's what the paint has always been called. And we racked our brain to try to come up with a nice, fancy, slick little name. And every time one of the guys in here would come in all excited with a new name, I'd say, yeah, that sounds good. That's called Jet Blow. Sherwin Williams has that. That sounds good. That's this. I mean, all the good names are taken up. So we just put the letter three or the Roman numeral three out there. So whenever you hear me mention Chisholm three, that's that's what that's relating to. So going back to the way you're playing, you want to put, you know, just keep in mind when you're spraying and you have a run, and you have to sand it and do an extra coat. You know, when you probably paint the whole airplane, you may be adding six, seven pounds to the whole airplane. Uh, if you're really into it, you know, maybe, maybe you ought to think about not putting that little hanging flashlight or that stop light, that stopwatch or them nice thick stainless heel plates. Maybe go with a thinner one or let's go with the traditional tenth of a or a tenth of an inch place of glass instead of the full eighth or three sixteenths. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways you can, you know, make a plane light and you have to start from the beginning. And I ain't saying that some of these other products is the way to go. I mean, that this, if you're if you're down to weighing every ounce, yeah, you're going to have to do everything you can to make it as light as possible. But I just want to explain to people that it's about that paint gun and it's just physics on how many that you're going to put on and it's just adding weight every time you do it. Uh, Bill Rusk had a very good blog that went on with the uh, supercub.org and I really respect him because he didn't just talk it. He would tell you what this way and he would compare this magneto with this one and you know, and, and he would put in there, but you're not going to have the heavy spark plugs. And he would really, all the way through his build, had the right mindset. And I think it was one point through there I read that he actually color sanded or maybe the primer sanded a wing and sanded all of it back down almost to the fabric, going to put another coat. and. I think he mentioned it, he couldn't even hardly get his scales to tell that it had lost any weight. Because when you're sanding it, it's kind of powdery, you know. So, you know, a lot of times you think, well, I'm going to sand it back down because of weight issues. And, and most of it has already evaporated out in the, the air. You know, the VOCs of the products and all of your thinners and everything is going to evaporate out. And a lot of parts of your paint, once the hardeners catalyze and everything, a lot of that is evaporated out. I've had some of these that I painted and cut out the next day and weighed. And came in a week later and weighed them and they were three grams lighter because it's constantly curing and more fumes are coming off of it so i just kind of wanted to do that not you know it's, it's not to just to explain to people it's like i'm going to use this one because this one's lighter this one's lighter i did a lot of my own tests since a lot of these were cut out and i think that i could almost make every process weigh just about the same if you put it on exactly by the directions and about the same number of coats they all just about as far as your traditional other than Ortex, you know, it's already got its color built on, so you don't you don't have that issue with that. Uh, you know, unless you're gonna be trying to put more paint on top and you're right back in the ballpark with everybody else. Uh, you know, they claim the ease of of repair. Well, I'll I'll compete and I'll challenge that because I take air tech or super flight or any of those and and I can show you where it's very easy to repair as far as sanding it back and putting the patch on, yeah, you're going to put a little paint and primer, or I can lap the paint and I can make it where it's a challenge for you to find where the, where the repair is on these. But they all, other than this, all of these, basically it's just a matter of how many coats of paint you put on and how you're going to build it up. And, it's, and, it, and it will slowly build on you as far as weight wise. So I just want to kind of cover that in this video. And I know I've Started out going to be a five minute video and this thing's probably 15, 20 minutes long. But I just wanted, wanted to, to let that out there for some people to kind of think about. Thank you. Kelly's going to edit this part in. I, I had this laid up here and I completely forgot what when I mentioned this that the process air tech and some of the others too can be put on at a minimum but still look nice. Uh, I did some of these. We're fixing to go to Anchorage for uh, the the, the trade show up there here about a week 
and I just put these little things together with just at least a round tube because we're not wanting to ship a bunch of stuff up there. We just carry them up there in our suitcases and everything. Uh, this is just an example of the new Chisholm. And if I hold this to the light, I can lightly see the weave, but you can see how, how shiny it is. And that is, I think, two coats of white over the primer. And that, I don't know if, where is it starting to show it? Mm -hmm. This is one coat of red. You can actually see where it, it ran off and you could just see a little bit of white through it. I mean, that is one coat of our red and you see how shiny it is. So that would be your minimal weight on something. And, you know, I mean, I would naturally want to let this set for about an hour and then come back with one more slick mist coat just to cover the little light, light corner spots. But this is just for a demonstration of what our product looks like with minimal, minimal coats on it. I think this was one shot of blue too. It actually, I can lay it up there and I can actually almost, it's not really orange peel or it's just a, it's shiny, but it just, it, it's just one coat of white on there or blue on top of the white. But I just wanted to edit that part in there. I had that laid up there to show and I completely forgot.